Yeah, it wouldn't have to rotate at all because if, if they would all just have to just curve. Cram them in there. Right. Yeah. I have made some crazy projects over the years. Some of them I've done for work, a few I've done just for myself. But my favorite part has always been the brainstorm, where you take these crazy ideas and fantasies and you figure out how to really make them work. It's time for another brainstorm. Again, uh, this time we have Ryan Fitzpatrick back. This hey is uh, Ryan, he goes by Platinum Fungi Online friend of mine we've done a couple things together mm -hmm. um, always fun to brainstorm with you Ryan yeah I love uh, it. check out his stuff online at platinumfungi.com check the link below props game systems beautiful stuff check it out uh, today is the infamous Mega Man arm cannon oh man we've talked about this a bunch of times right one of these days you and I are gonna build a Mega Man arm cannon yes and we actually have parts from one from many moons ago still sitting around. Yep, yep. So since we haven't actually built it yet, other mm -hmm. than a rough basic shell, yeah, just let's annoying. let's brainstorm what we would do to make it function in the way that, you know, YouTube video props function. You mm -hmm. know, it, it has to do something. Right. It, it can't right. just look pretty. It right. can't just be a fiberglass reproduction. Um, even though those are amazing and cool. I need something more than that. Yeah. I need it to do yeah, something. Yeah, me too. Me too. I think the first question is, what does it shoot? Because that's one of the coolest things about Mega Man. You know, when you beat the Robot Master, you absorb that power, and so it can shoot anything from bubbles to fire. You yeah, know, saw and you blades, can you all can kinds of different things. You can switch between them mm -hmm. in the mm -hmm. game. So um, I think that's going to be what the bulk of this brainstorm is is mm -hmm. figuring out ways of shooting things right Mega Man arm cannon uh, it looks like roughly something like this right mm -hmm. and stuff comes out of there just like you would expect it's got you know a, some kind of thing on the side we could throw lights in that's no big deal we can do lights so there's our arm cannon so we have this confined space that your hand has to fit in. Mm -hmm. So the center of it basically has to be hollow for your arm. Yeah, your arm is... Do you draw? I've never seen you draw. Do you draw? No, here, draw a hand in there. Roughly the size that, that, that a hand would be <laughs> well, in there. Well, how, how far in? Well, about halfway. We wanted it, we've talked about this before, just right onto the forearm so that you can like clench your bicep still, mm -hmm. but it's as close to your elbow as you can get, right? So it's like right at the oh, widest part of your forearm, mm -hmm. right? So the whole thing is gonna be yeah. maybe so your arm kind of like two here. thirds of the length then. Yeah, so, so I mean, probably you're talking almost two feet. Your hand would be almost like there. Yeah, That'd be the edge of your hand. Yeah. So okay, so and you can just do a there. super rough shape of a hand. Oh, there you go, man. You're a better artist than me. Here I'm holding something. Yes. Here's my arm coming up back. All right. So that means that we only have this space to work in right here. Mm-hmm. Right? All the way around, though. Mm -hmm. So on the sides of the hand and on top of the hand. Mm -hmm. Which instantly then makes me think of different tubes for different weapons on some type of a... Uh... Well, it wouldn't even have to necessarily be a road. Yeah, it wouldn't have to rotate at all because if... They would all just have to curve. Cram them in there. Right. Yeah. Okay, so uh, things that we would like to shoot out of the cannon. So we've got fire, ice, bubbles, and saw blades. And I think we can theoretically come up with a plan for each and every one of those, even if they wouldn't all fit at the same time. First up, saw blades. Mm -hmm. Okay, so a saw blade launcher would go... Okay, here's your saw blade. There's your saw blade, right? And we want it to shoot this direction. Mm -hmm. So the easiest way to do that is, uh, well, there's several different ways. But really the best way I can think of is the kind of two wheel systems, like, um, like what a, uh, tennis ball launcher uses where you got two oh, wheels spinning right right so you'd have um, a wheel kind of underneath there and a wheel up here and they're spinning 
this way super fast and whenever the the saw blade goes in it gets launched forward by the the wheels mm -hmm. now that means that when you when you're looking down inside this thing you've got your hand that is here inside of it you know here's your thumb you're gonna end up with a saw blade here a wheel here a wheel here we're really pushing the boundaries of the size here um, and the saw blades you'd have to use like like the mini saw blades yeah but you can get them they exist mm -hmm. for like an angle grinder or a little handheld dremel saw right you can get saw blades for those right so that would theoretically work now with your hand in here you'd have to mount uh, one motor can be stationary or can even not exist at all it could be just like a tray so we can cross that one off space wise and you mount a high torque motor here to this motor or to this wheel right mm -hmm. so you don't even need two motors you can we'll get rid of that one um, and then all you really have to do is fire that sucker up let it get up to speed and then slide your blade in into the path of the motor so you could have uh, if we did it we'll let gravity help us here let's say we're looking inside of our arm cannon here we have a tray a wheel we'll make this wheel as big as we'll fit here the wheel is spinning this way and um, we could have a stack of saw blades here doo, 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 doo. lots of saw blades and whenever we pull our we, we would have two triggers Mm -hmm. So one trigger fires up this to full speed. The other trigger, when you hit it, just kicks a solenoid right there that knocks the first blade Into position. forward to touch that. You have to put them really close together. Mm -hmm. But solenoids are easy. Um, now, in order to do all this, do you think we would have to somehow kind of angle your arm over to the side of the cannon so that we actually have more of the center of the cannon hollowed out because if we're just dealing with the the space around your arm having this curl and then you know yeah, go yeah. at an angle isn't going to be very yeah i think realistic pushing your arm as far to one side as possible would would be necessary mm -hmm. uh, to make this work just due to the sheer size of the motor and the saw blades right now if you were to go down to like the little discs for a Dremel, the cutoff wheels for a Dremel. Um, <laughs> yeah, I forgot about those. Which, no, I don't, I don't have them sitting here. But I mean, you know, this is a, this is a cutoff wheel for a Dremel Moto saw. So I mean, yeah, that's a good size. Anything that size or smaller, you could fling out of there. And this system would totally work. The only thing that's missing here is batteries. Uh, you could dump radio-controlled car batteries under there. And, uh, and that would work. So there's saw blades, man. We did it. Saw blades. Boom. Done. Saw blades. Okay. So what comes next after saw blades? Uh, we got fire, ice. What else do you say? Fire and ice. Fire, ice, and bubbles. bubbles. Fire, ice, bubbles. Bubbles is easy. Well, yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. You've got this. How would you do bubbles? Well, I mean, there's already pre-existing. I don't know. You're on it. That's the same thing I would yeah, do. Yeah, there's like pre-existing pre bubble guns, and, and uh, I'd probably just disassemble something pre-existing and um, reassemble it and probably modify the trigger system. Um, I don't even know if I'd disassemble it or modify it. Well, just to make it fit inside you know? of our, our prop like, most effectively. Uh, let's say this is your arm cannon, and... Things looking ridiculous. Uh, it's legit. And your your hand is, or you could get one of those bubble guns that are like kind of shaped like this, and then they have the thing that comes out here, and the handle goes down like that, mm -hmm. and you just grab that handle, and that's it. And then true, out come your little bubbles. I guess I was thinking of bloop, bloop, bloop. trying to modify, also to make it a little bit more. What you'd say, you know, bigger bubbles or you know, more powerful or whatever you'd say, where it, you know, what, yeah, what shoot bubbles that are a little bit more proportional to the size of our arm cannon. You could, you could overdrive that uh, little bubble gun mm -hmm. literally just by bumping the voltage to the motor that's in it. 
Um, so you could crack it open. It probably takes like two double A's, mm -hmm. and you could put like instead of three volts, you could put six volts to it. You would burn that motor out eventually, but mm -hmm. you'd be pushing that little fan a lot harder, and you get further bubbles. They go further out, but they can blow them pretty far as is. So there we go. There's bubbles. bubbles. Done. Bubbles. Done. Bubbles. Done.